Hey YouTube, Kevin Cleary here with a very cool video for you today. This is going to be a knife video, gear video, but maybe more importantly, it's a collaboration video. So there's myself and a couple of other uh, YouTubers, Nick Shabazz, Seven Ready Knife Reviews, and John Martin. And what we've done is we've all put together some videos about things that are a little on the heavy side for EDC, but are cool enough and useful enough that they're still recommended by us, okay? Uh, so go ahead, sit back and relax. It's gonna be a little longer because there are four of us working together here. Uh, and if you haven't checked out these other channels, uh, the description or the links to those channels are in the description box below. Go ahead and do that. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this video and I think it'll be really worthwhile for you. So let me get started with a couple of folders that honestly are a little too heavy but I don't care I still love them and I still carry them and uh, do not regret it even in the least first one is a really good example of what I'm talking about this is a Microtech DOC big knife bulky knife but very heavy okay this thing you know is you're really you're up to about seven ounces on this and guess what I don't care at all I absolutely love this knife. I love the look. I love the feel in hand. I love the, the different materials that are used. I love the color. I love the blade grind. Just everything about this knife I'm a huge fan of. And so, uh, yes, it's heavy. Is it heavier than most of the other knives I carry? Yes, it is. Do I care? Not at all. I still love this knife. And lots of other guys do as well. There's lots of uh, people who've really enjoyed the DOC. Uh, by the way, if you get one of the more recent ones, it will not have as bad of a pocket clip as the original one did. But And this one is the, the newer variation on the clip, but totally awesome knife. So that's number one. Yes, it's a little too heavy. Totally, in my mind, worth the wait. Next up for a pocket knife, I've got one more, very quickly, Riat Knives Torrent, absolutely love it. Yes, it's a little too heavy for it, it's eight and a quarter inches, like eight and a quarter inches is not a big knife, uh, but I still carry this. I uh, Honestly, this is one of my favorite knives, uh, and so that weight does not bother me a bit. Again, highly recommended. I picked for my folder the Kaiser designed by John Gray. GPB1. So as you can tell, it is a really big knife. You can probably tell from pictures. Um, it's 7.05 ounces, so it's really heavy for a knife. A lot of people on YouTube talk about how if a knife's over four ounces, they won't carry it or something, but this knife is completely fine for me to carry. Even though it's seven ounces and really big, I can carry it in shorts and I do it all the time doesn't really feel too bulky. The pocket clip holds it in nice and tight. I definitely think the Kaiser is worth the wait. And I have three knives here that are heavier for my understanding. You know, my channel or I focus on carrying lightweight or lightweight knives for the size. So these knives are a little bit odd ducklings in my collection, but I still really, really like these knives because of the design, materials used and things like that. And let's get the first knife out in front of the camera and it's going to be the Boker Plus Bullpup. Really, really nice knife that hasn't gotten a lot of coverage on YouTube. I think there are only two video reviews out on YouTube and one of them is mine. I really, really like this knife. It's a nice, good sized EDC blade. A little bit on the heavier side because of the materials used. You have pretty thick um, steel liners here and uh, titanium bolsters and a pretty... Uh, stout blade thickness but it's just such a nice handle material and design and it's so close to the custom design by um, Mr. Marlowe so really nice blade really good looking nice in hand VG10 steel titanium bolsters micarta handle skirt which I absolutely love so really really cool knife the Boker Bullpup and certainly worth the wait then another knife that I like to carry and is for my understanding a little bit on the heavier side is the Boker Quaken. Here I have a customized version from Cuscadi with their blue twill scales and the glow in the dark backspacer. And I think for the slimness of this knife, it is quite heavy. That's also because of the blade stock and the very thick steel liners that I decided to use here on the Quaken. Really love the overall design. Really nice slim carry in the pocket so you can use 
your pocket for uh, some different things like your cell phone or your uh, wallet and things like that but a little bit on the heavier side for me because of the uh, used materials but I really like especially this poker Kraken because of the customized scale I think it looks really really slick and the last knife I have for you that is going to be worth the wait for me is a knife that I haven't reviewed before and it is a really nice I think discontinued uh, poker soul engine model so actually one that is made uh, in uh, Germany and it was my first uh, knife from Germany and it is the Arctos XL really cool Jens Anzo design really big knife really uh, broad and thick steel here on the blade very nice blade shape stonewash N690 steel also polished brown micarta scales I'm just a sucker for the micarta and very thick titanium liners as well so Quite a hefty and large knife, but so nice in hand and just gorgeously put together by Volker Solingen. Free falling and this runs on washers, so really, really nice quality that they have put in these knives. So these are my three folders that are worth the wait for me. Heavier knives, but still very, very cool and very capable folders. So for me, in the folding knife world, the very definition of worth its weight is this guy here. This is the Graham Knives Mid-Tech Folding Razel knife, and this is just one heck of a knife for a bunch of reasons. In addition to the beautiful things like, for instance, the fit and finish being excellent, the action as a flipper being great, and closing really smoothly too, which brings me joy, this is a really good tool. Absolutely 100%, if I am carrying this knife, I am capable of doing what I need to get done. It's got a nice Warncliffe blade here, and it's actually not as uh, not as overly thick as you would think behind the edge. But in addition to this, you've got this second blade up here, which is great for scraping. And this is just my go-to knife for the outdoors, for home improvement, any time where I'm going to be going hard use. This is what I reach for 100%. Couple this with good ergonomics and incredible good clip. This is just a, a really stellar option. Honestly... Uh, there are two downsides to this. The first is, well, what we're talking about here. This is a heavy beast. You're looking at about six and a half ounces on this guy. Holy crap, that's a lot of weight. Um, the other issue is that they're getting hard to find. This is a mid-tech knife, which means it was produced in small quantities, and uh, you're not so easy to find anymore. Uh, you can get them on forums if you watch out for that. Uh, John Graham, I keeps talking about maybe doing another run of these at some point. I really hope he does. This is the second run of mid decks from him. Um, and you can also get them on the Graham Knives Facebook group on occasion. They pop up there. But if you ever see one of these available, just buy it. 100%. This is a stellar, stellar knife. And it is my very definition of what is worth the wait to me. So the second category we are going to cover in this video is going to be flashlight. I don't have a very large flashlight collection. Uh, actually, I only own about three or four, and uh, I mostly carry a through night tie with me on my keychain as my EDC flashlight, which is a very small AAA flashlight, uh, which is also very lightweight, so it's not going to fit into this video. But if I'm going into the outdoors for hiking or going into the woods to test some uh, fixed blade and things like that, I carry this flashlight here, which is going to be the Sunwayman T23T which is a pretty, pretty nice high value flashlight with a thousand lumen of output running on an 18650 battery. And that also makes it a little bit heavier to carry. I love the interface on this uh, little flashlight here. You also get the nice outputs as I said before, really, really nice modes, really easy to circle through all of them. You also have a very easy to get to strobe and some other modes like beacon, SOS and things like that. So really, really nice interface here and also very affordable you can check out all the details in the video review i did on this flashlight so really really nice flashlight and certainly worth the wait for me the sunway man t23 c so in terms of flashlights um if i'm just at home and I'm wandering around, I'll usually carry something like this. This is a Jetbeam RRT1, and I love this light because it's got a rotary function to it. If you twin, uh, twist this ring, it uh, gets brighter and then whatnot. And it's a great light, but the thing is, it doesn't have all that much runtime. I, you need to charge it using a specialized charger for weird batteries because it's taken a very strange battery in there. Um, and, you know, it's 
it's a great light that disappears in your pocket, but isn't necessarily going to last you an entire week. When I'm traveling, I much prefer this guy, and I think it is worth its weight in gold. And the reason for that, this is a Phoenix UC35, and in terms of flashlights, it's not the grail of grails. The light it puts out isn't the most color true or anything like that. It's not the brightest. It doesn't have the longest runtime. Um, but what it does have is an actual high-quality lithium battery in there. It's running an 18650 battery, which gives you a good amount of duration. You can run this guy for a while. Um, but more importantly, what it gives you is a little bit of magic hiding under this flap right here. Under this flap is a micro USB port. What this means is that you can take this light and just plug in any micro USB cable, connect it to a computer, to a charger, whatever, and it will charge the flashlight. And it'll just charge and charge and charge until this little thing turns green and then you're good to go. Which means that the only thing you need to carry in order to have a flashlight that is 100% ready to go at any point during your travels is a USB cable. And chances are you've already got one of those for your phone. And so this is just beautiful. You don't have to worry about using your light because you can always recharge your light. You don't have to worry about packing spare batteries like if you did a double A and triple A light. You get all the advantages of a really high end modern flashlight and you don't have to think about chargers or anything like that. This is just a stellar thing. And when I'm traveling, this is 100% worth its weight. And is something I would never leave at home because when the power goes out in the hotel room, if you don't have a flashlight, you're kind of screwed. Anyways, that's 100% worth the weight traveling, but when I'm at home, I tend to go a little lighter weight. There you go. The Streamlight Micro Stream. Let's see if I can focus on it real quick. This light just takes a little um, AAA battery. It's really bright um, for being so small. I just messed up my lighting. There we go. But if you consider that I never carry a flashlight because I really can't justify carrying one when my iPhone pretty much has a flashlight on it. Whenever I need to see in the dark, I can just pull my uh, iPhone flashlight out and I use that. So if you compare this weight to and pocket space, um, clipping that to your pocket compared to a little light on the back of your phone, I definitely think it's heavy compared to that, so it's more of a um, perspective type thing. Not really a uh, a total weight, but a perspective. I can't justify carrying a flashlight still, even though this one's really small, but I guess a lot of people probably could uh, easily justify carrying this little one. Still not really for me though. What about the flashlight? Well, for the flashlight, I'm going to recommend one of these. And this is, I'm going to do this more in theory, okay? This is a full-size um, 18650 style light. So if I open this up for you, here's what this light is kind of standing for for me. This is an 18650 rechargeable battery. These batteries are really, really great. They can deliver a lot of power, a lot of brightness for a very long time. And I can tell you, I keep this uh, in my pack and uh, I have carried this around for a long time. The battery is still good as new. Uh, tons of burn time on this. Uh, I do burn it down and recharge it every so often so that I can uh, make sure that I've got a reasonably fresh charge. I don't want to pull this out after six or eight months or a year or something and be like, oh no, I've got no, no charge. I have an extra battery anyway, but still. Uh, so, this style of light, the 18650 battery, and yes, it's, it's a significant step up in size and bulk and weight from something smaller like uh, one of these keychain lights uh, like that, something like the Thrunite Ti3, or this happens to be the Ultratac K18, which I really, really like. Um, but, something like that uh, gives you a lot more utility a lot more brightness, a lot more usefulness in a lot of situations. You know, this can really brighten up a room or a hallway or a pathway where with the, the little lights, uh, yeah, they're better than nothing, but 
this is a big step up. And to me, again, it's worth it in a lot of situations to carry that little bit of extra weight and have all the flashlight you could ever want. And these, by the way, if you are sort of uninitiated into flashlights, um, you know, a nicer light in my mind is worth it. I think I told you about how I put my Baton S2 or S20 through the wash and it worked, came out fine, didn't even hurt it. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons it's worth spending that little bit of extra money. The Gavco Sharp Knife Fixed Blade. Another one, you might be thinking um, the next two don't really look very heavy, so why am I even going to talk about them in this video? But uh, also along with the worth of the weight would be kind of size. So I don't usually carry a fixed blade. The only really fixed blade I would carry would be a neck knife. And for this neck knife, it is skeletonized, so it is pretty light um, for how it could be if it wasn't skeletonized. But if you compare this to a neck knife like this, Boker Vox designed um, Mega Mini, I think it's called, it is way bigger, thicker steel, definitely heavier, and um, a lot longer. So I think it's I think it's worth it because it's not too big. It still is pretty big. Um, pretty almost a full-sized handle you can get almost four fingers maybe you could choke up but along with the weight would be my carry setup which is not for a neck knife right now it'd be for a hip carry so it's big sheath and um, kind of tech lock on there uh, that gets pretty heavy definitely a lot heavier than the mega mini now and uh, still worth the weight but it is heavy um, especially for a small fixed blade like something I would carry. Next thing we are going to cover is a fixed blade and there uh, I had no problem to select my number one worth the weight fixed blade uh, in my collection and it is the Southern Grind Jackal. Really really great knife. I absolutely love this knife. I'm going to take it out of the sheath for you and you can see just a gorgeous gorgeous knife and so much capability packed into this rather small outdoor fixed blade. You get a really, really nice blade thickness here, and that certainly uh, adds to the weight, but it is just an extremely ergonomic outdoor blade. Really, really nice uh, saw blade steel made in Peachtree, Georgia by Southern Grind. Exceptional quality, gorgeous, gorgeous handle material, and you can actually customize these blades on their website and get a lot of different combinations and a Kydex sheath that matches with your a knife so exceptionally done kydex sheath gorgeous gorgeous and very very capable do it all uh, outdoor fixed blade you can baton with it no problem you can carve with it you can feather stick with it you can even chop a little bit with it because it has a little bit of weight to it so really really nice all around outdoor fixed blade the southern grind jackal and this one is absolutely worth the wait i also had a very large fixed blade, the Condor Moonstalker, uh, but if I had to choose one knife to do it all, it would certainly be the Jekyll here from Southern Grind. Certainly worth the wait. I really love this fixed blade. Now, let's move over to fixed blades, and now I'm going to shift gears just a little bit on you. This is, the first one is not so much an EDC fixed blade. This is the SE6. Now, most guys are not going to EDC this. It is quite capable of being set up for horizontal carry. So theoretically you could, and I actually have on a couple of occasions um, EDC this knife when I know that, uh, especially when you know I'm out camping, you know when you go out camping, you're gonna, you know you need a bigger knife anyway for things. And this is nice because it's a really well balanced knife, at least for I find it is. It's not extremely big and extremely heavy, but it is big enough and heavy enough that you can do some light chopping with it, you can baton with it, but it's also got a thin enough grind and a good enough edge profile that you could, you know, do food prep and a whole bunch of other camp tasks as well. So when I'm camping, um, even if I'm just going on a, a short hike, I'll often bring this knife with me. And to me, even though it's bigger and heavier than say the SC3 or whatever folding knife I've got in my pocket that day, to me, this is worth the wait for a number of reasons, okay? One, if, uh, especially on a hike, I go for a hike with the family, 
my son will sometimes say, Dad, can we have a, a campfire? Well, if all I've got is my folder, you know, yeah, I can break some branches off a tree and get a fire going. But if I've got this, I'm fully equipped. I can, I can, you know, chop something pretty big. I can baton stuff down to the size I need it. I, I've got everything that I need just in this knife to get a pretty good fire going. Uh, and that's, uh, plus, you know, think of the, the defensive role for a knife like this as well. Uh, so great knife. Uh, and this is a knife that even though it's a very large knife, um, I have actually EDC'd this a few times in a specific situation where I'm anticipating the need for a larger knife. So that's the fixed blade that I want to share with you. So I'm gonna be honest here. For me, a fixed blade knife is almost never worth the wait. What I mean by that is I live a pretty boring life. I work in an office, I commute on a bus. It's not really a situation very often that I, I need to process firewood or really wail on something as I'm cutting. I hammer the knife into a tree to make a makeshift ladder. It just doesn't come up for me, and so it doesn't make sense for me to carry around the big fixed blade knife, or even, frankly, a small one. 99.9% .9 of my cutting tasks are just perfectly handled by a much smaller knife. However, that said, if I do need a fixed blade, I got two favorites. First is the EC Laser Strike. Um, this is a lot like the EC5 in terms of size, but it's much, much thinner. And it's a lot less, it's still a very beefy knife though. And so this is kind of my beater knife. If I need to, you know, process some firewood or something like debark a tree stump, whatever, this is what I reach for because it's more than capable, but it's also something I'm not gonna be able to injure. Uh, the other fixed blade I like a lot is this guy. This is the Spyderco Bradley Bowie, uh, designed by Gail Bradley and uh, using the uh, PSF 27 steel, which is a lot like D2, uh, except more powder metallurgy. But it's really great in the hand, ergonomically speaking. It's got enough blade that it's beefy, but not so much blade that it's a bad slicer. Uh, the geometry on it is really good. It's just a, it's a really nice fixed blade choice. And so if I need something that's really hardcore, I'll go EC. That's very, very seldom. But if I just want a, a fixed blade around, this is usually where I end up. This guy's a little on the overly pricey side, but if you can get one used, it's a great deal. And this guy's just fine on price. So these are both really good fixed blade options. But like I said, for me, fixed blade is almost never worth the wait. Now this one's completely opposite. So this Leatherman is uh, the Leatherman OHT. It is really big, really heavy, bulky, comes with a case. So it doesn't really add much weight, but it does add some of the bulk to it. This is 9.9 .9 ounces, so almost 10 ounces. Uh, some people will probably carry pistols this heavy with them almost. Um, but I think you could really justify it and it'd be worth the wait if you're working construction or something. If you're working in a desk job and uh, wearing dress clothes or something, then you definitely don't want to have this in your pocket or, uh, or on your hip. But if you're a construction worker, you can easily just throw that on your belt. Um, or if you work outside, definitely be worth the wait. If you're going out fishing, you can throw it on your belt. EDC, but just depending on who you are, what your job is, and what you're doing, I'd say it'd be worth the wait. Not really for me still. Now let's come to the multi-tool. Uh, I have to say I'm not a big multi-tool guy. I don't carry one uh, in my EDC kit, but I do carry one if I'm going on an outdoor trip. And the one I carry the most is my Leatherman Wingman. Full steel uh, budget multi-tool offering from Leatherman, but still offers good quality and a really nice tool selection in my opinion. So you have your one-handed deploying a blade that you can access from the outside of the tool and it has a 428C blade steel, it's partly serrated and also has a liner lock. Uh, the lockup is not the, the most perfect here. You can hear there's a little bit of rattling here, so not a perfect lockup, but for the price of the multi-tool I think that's quite okay and you're also not going to do a very hard task with your blade on a multi-tool. So that is a really nice feature here, the 428C blade. Then you also have pretty nice scissors as well that you can get to from the outside. But it's quite hard to get them locked and opened fully here. Just get, now they are locked. And if they are open and locked, it, they work very well. They are very sharp out of the box. They have a really nice spring tension here, as you can see. And they will not go anywhere, but it's a little bit hard to get them open fully 
to uh, engage the lock here. But two really nice tools here from the outside. Of course, you also get tools on the inside as on every multi-tool. And the pliers are done really exceptionally here on this wingman, in my opinion. You get quite nice and precise plier heads here, which meet up in the front perfectly. You have non-replaceable wire cutters, but that's certainly good enough for the price of this multi-tool. And they are spring-loaded, which is a feature that I really like on a multi-tool. I think it's a pretty nice achievement that they have that here uh, on this uh, budget multi-tool. One other really nice thing here is that you have the pocket clip, which is not on a lot of multi-tools and makes it easier to carry. You also have some additional tools here, uh, which are pretty standard. Nothing out of the ordinary here, just your file, your uh, can opener and this uh, little package opening cutter here and on the other side you have a um, Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver as well so overall a really nice budget multi-tool that you are not afraid to use certainly packs a little bit of a weight but I think it's a good way you really get a lot of capabilities uh, with your Leatherman wingman and uh, certainly worth the wait for me for an outdoor trip in terms of multi-tools, for me, this is the setup I carry on a regular basis, and it is absolutely worth the wait. The Leatherman Wave is a great multi-tool, absolutely stellar. Um, they also make the Charge TTI, which is kind of an upgrade, but honestly, it's not enough of an upgrade to justify its cost. The Wave, I think, is the sweet spot in multi-tools. It has every tool that I would want. It has a, a plain knife blade, that one's well-loved. It's got files, it's got a serrated blade on there, and it's got uh, another kind of file. I mean, there's a lot of joy here. It's even got a saw. Go figure, right? But it has all the tools I want and none of the tools I do not want. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. And that's why the Leatherman Wave has earned its way into my EDC. However, one thing that is not a joy with the Leatherman Wave or frankly, any of these multi-tools is actually using the screwdriver on a regular basis because you're kind of spinning this guy and it's very easy, especially if you're trying to get down into a, a little old, that spinning this entire thing is just not possible. And for that, it's a beautiful thing to carry this little driver extension from Leatherman. It just slots right in there and it gives you a lot more distance, which is a beautiful thing. And it even allows you to use the entire thing, although you can do this with the regular, but, and then you can get extra torque by turning the entire handle. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. You can also use this on its own, uh, which is a beautiful thing. It'll hold any of the bits. And speaking of the bits, that's the other crucial, crucial part of this setup. This little bit kit that Leatherman sells is absolutely freaking magical because it has every kind of bit you can think of. It's got all of your flatheads, all of your Phillips heads. It's got Torx. It's got Allen key. It's got all sorts of things that a lot of people don't even know the name for. You're going to have a bit for it. And that's a beautiful thing for me, particularly at work, because very often people are like, oh, I need to take this apart. Damn. I need a screwdriver. Oh no, I've never seen this bit before. And it's just like a boring little Torx bit or something like that. When you are able to pull out of your backpack a Leatherman and a bit kit and say, oh yeah, I've got that bit here. Let me take it apart. You look like a wizard. Absolutely 100%. You could start throwing fireballs around the room and everybody would still just be amazed that you had a Torx bit on you at that given moment. And the fact that for practically no weight at all, you're able to carry all of these bits together, along with a good driver to use them in, is just absolutely wonderful. So for me, every day, all day, the Leatherman Wave is with me in my pack, and the bit kit comes in handy way more often than you'd think it would. So uh, there you go. To me, the Leatherman Wave with the bit kit is absolutely worth its weight and makes me seem like a wizard more often, and that's just a beautiful thing. Next, let's move over to the multi-tool. This is one you've seen before, and the setup that I have is why I think this is worth the wait, okay? Uh, this is the Leatherman Signal, okay? And it does have a bunch of uh, outdoor sort of survival type of, type of tools on it. What I actually like about this, and the reason I carry this larger tool sometimes, and where I think it's really worth its weight in gold you could almost say is because of this feature right here you've got these fold out um, bits and if you combine that in my sheath there's a little pocket at the back and I put the bit kit in there and if you've got this bit kit with you you now have 
you know, 10 or 15 different, well, in fact, you've got, uh, let's see, there's five, 10. So you've got 20 different bits that are available now uh, to you through this one tool. So to me, that makes this invaluable. Not only that, but the other thing that's cool about this, especially if you're in any kind of an outdoor situation, which I live in small town Ontario, so I'm literally no more than a few hundred feet away from the forest at any time. Um, this has a bunch of good outdoor uses. And so for me, again, uh, in a lot of situations, yeah, I know it's big and bulky and, and a little overboard for some tasks, but again, it's worth the wait as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so that's the Leatherman Signal. That's my offering for the multi-tool. Now let's come to the last category of this little worth the wait video and it's going to be the wallet for me personally because I recently added about three weeks ago the Travex wallet to my EDC system a really nice US made unique wallet design uh, from Travex it's called the Axis they also have a bunch of other wallet options but I really like this one you can get it in a bunch of colors I have here the gray version and it's just a really unique wallet design really nice compact and slim but it can accept a lot of your uh, cards it's actually adjustable for that you can put a bunch of cards in there and it just fits really nice you can also put some cash here on the back side of the wallet you can open it up very easily and get to your cash like this or just uh, scroll through your cards very easily as well so i really like this wallet you also have a little uh, compartment here on the inside for a key or some coins or things like that so overall really nice compact small wallet but because the main construction pieces of this wallet are steel so the front and the back panel here are made out of stainless steel so that is certainly going to add to the weight and it's a little bit heavier but it's still quite compact and slim to carry you have also this lanyard here which serves as your adjusting device for the thickness so you can adjust it to the actual amount of cards and money you store in there. So it's always going to be wrapped really tight by the nylon and the paracord here. And it also serves as a quick extractor out of your pocket. So I really like the overall design and the quality here on this Travex wallet. And it is certainly worth the wait for me. I really like this um, wallet so far after three weeks of using it. So here are all the items that I have chosen that are worth the wait for me personally to carry in an EDC environment or on an outdoor trip like the flashlight and the fixed blade and also the multi-tool here. I think all of these items have a little bit a higher weight than some other options in their respected fields, but all of them offer either coolness, additional capabilities, or a unique design in a trade-off for their additional weight. And all of these items are certainly worth the wait for me personally. All of them are very high quality, really well executed products. And I think you would be happy with either one of these items that I have here in front of the camera right now. I wanted to thank Kevin Clear for organizing this little collaboration between our channels. And I think it's a really cool idea to do something like this. And I would again certainly um, recommend you to check all the other three channels out. I will have a link to all of their channels in my description box below. So I hope you liked this video. If you did so, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please leave it in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of these knife gun and gear videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and goodbye. Now for my sort of odd thing, I've got to add the Skint Solutions um, EDC pouch. Okay, I looked at a ton of pouches. I knew I didn't want to go like the nothing fancy route and carry a, a fanny pack. Um, I've looked at a ton. I mean, I looked at so many Maxpedition bags, it was ridiculous, and didn't really find any that I thought were worthwhile. Uh, this, I finally saw, it's a Canadian website, These this company's out of Alberta. Uh, this fits perfectly all of my sort of extra cards as well as a bunch of EDC stuff, bandages, a Sharpie, a lighter, flashlight. Okay, so this, this pack, um, yeah, it's kind of awkward. And the other day someone asked me, what are you carrying all the time? And I showed them and they were like, hey, that's actually really handy. Uh, but to me, yeah, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but not that much to have all of this utility. So to me, again, my sort of random pick is the Skin Solutions. I really, really like this and use it. It literally goes with me everywhere all the time. Okay, I'm never without it. So there you go, guys. 
Uh, that's my pick for these five categories of things that, yeah, it's a little bigger, it's a little bulkier, but to me, it's worth it to have that extra utility and carry a little extra weight. Thanks for watching and enjoy the perspectives from the other guys as well. And last one for my random thing is the MC Fabricators pen. So this pen is brass. Um, it's pretty short, but it's still pretty solid, pretty thick brass. Um, heavy for a pen. I've noticed when you throw it in a pocket, it just like falls straight to the bottom and you can feel it in there kind of wobbling around and stuff when you walk. So it is pretty heavy, um, especially if you throw it in a shirt pocket. And if you compare it to like plastic pens, just like these normal everyday pens, um, it is really heavy compared to those. Um, but I think the coolness factor of it being milled out, um, or not milled, but like laved out, it's got that cool knurling, knurling back there on the butt cap. It's got a Fisher Space Pin insert. I think that coolness factor definitely makes it worth the weight. Um, worth it to throw it in your shirt pocket, even if it gets annoying because of how cool it is. Okay, final bit of gear that absolutely needs to be a body or everyday carry and is 100% worth the weight is a wristwatch. So I, I know what you're thinking right now, but, but Nick, but Nick, I carry a smartphone. Why would I carry a wristwatch if I already have the phone? That's redundant. I can just look at the phone for the time. Yay, whoa there, Sparky, hold on. I got three good reasons that you're gonna wanna carry a watch in addition to having your smartphone. And don't get me wrong, I love the phone. I'm recording one one right now. A wristwatch is just way quicker. If you're just doing something and you need to know the time, you look down, you're done. Case closed, problem solved. Especially if it's a nice and legible wristwatch that you can always read at a glance. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, because it's just, it's quick, it's easy. It's always on your wrist. Chances are, if you're typing along, you look down, you can already see your wrist. You don't have to move, you don't have to, you just look down, you see the time, and before you even thought about it, you know the time and you're back to whatever you're doing. Much, much, much quicker than reaching into your pocket, pulling out your phone, turning your phone on, putting your phone back in the pocket, etc. So that's the first thing. It's just so damn efficient and quick, and you know the time before you even think about knowing the time. It doesn't take any brain cycles whatsoever to figure out the time. The second issue with using the smartphone as the watch is that smartphones are really great at giving you distractions. It's very easy. You look down at your smartphone for the time, but then you see, oh, hey, on the lock screen here, I got a text from Herbie. Hey, huh, I wonder how Herbie's doing. Is he still dating that crazy girl, Kitty? You know, and then you go into this and suddenly you're distracted from whatever you were doing in the first place. You're texting Herbie back, uh, oh, wow, cool, Candy Crush has a notification for me. I better go earn more Smurf berries or whatever the heck they've got you doing in the free-to-play hellscape. Anyways, I I'm not a Luddite, but a smartphone is a really efficient distracting tool. And you look down at your watch and it's never going to tell you anything but the time and the date. The date's another beautiful thing, by the way. How often do you have to ask people for the date when you're signing paperwork? Never again. So your wristwatch is not going to distract you in the same way that a smartphone can. Then finally, the last issue is the social issue here. Let's say you're sitting in a meeting that's long and interminable, and you're just sitting there and you're like, oh my god, if this meeting goes on 20 more minutes, I am going to die. And you're trying to figure out when your suffering will end. Well, it's very easy if you're just sitting with your arms at the table to look down at a glance and see, okay, huh, I got another 20 minutes of this. Hmm, don't need to pop the cyanide capsule yet. Or something like that. And it's completely, it's nonchalant. You just, you look down at your wrist real quick. No one can even notice it. Are you sitting in the meeting? You're talking to somebody walking down the hall. Looking down at your watch, you can disguise that very effectively. As opposed to if you have to take out your smartphone, look at it, you know, people will notice that. And some people will consider it very rude if you bust out your phone in the middle of talking to them. That's a generational thing. I don't mind it so much. But a wristwatch is always going to be more subtle. And so if you're on a schedule, or if you're dying over here and need to know when you're going to be free, a wristwatch is a much more compelling and quick way to check that in a heartbeat. You don't have to go expensive. Uh, in fact, it's probably best that you don't go expensive. This is a $10 wristwatch that does the trick 100%. Casio F91W. This guy right here on the band is 60 bucks overall. Casio Duro. 
This guy goes for 500 bucks, but it's radio controlled. So you always have the exact correct atomic time. So is this guy. And this guy has fun things like a compass and a barometer and whatnot. Yeah, that's East. Um, but there are so many good options out there in the wristwatch world. Don't think you have to go Rolex. Don't Just any damn wristwatch will do the trick. Here's another one. It's like 30 bucks. Come on. And it works just fine. But there's a lot of joy in just being able to glance down at the time. And so even though it's a little bit redundant if you carry in a smartphone, a wristwatch is 100, 1,000% 1, worth the wait for you.